Zombie Teens Evolution. This is the sequel to Zombie Kids Evolution, which I played a couple of years ago and I wanted to review it. I remember distinctly uh, wanting to finish the campaign before I reviewed it. And we finished the campaign with my kids and I, I forgot to review it. I guess it's possible that's what that was the time when the pandemic struck. I don't remember the details. I remember that we loved that campaign and we were very excited when we started playing uh, the sequel, Zombie Teens Evolution. I'm not going to show you either of these games. I'm going to talk mainly about this one with references to uh, the other one also. Uh, this way you get uh, one and a half reviews in one video. All right. Um, and I'm not going to show you anything. I'm just going to show you the back of the box, the image that is here to give you a sense of the board. And that's it. Because both Zombie Teens and Zombie Kids bring the joy of the legacy system uh, to very younger players, to a family kind of games. And we've had other games that have done that after Zombie Kids, but I think Zombie Kids was the first one that did it. By, by the time Zombie Teens arrived, you know, there are other options also. But... The law for the zombie evolution system uh, still burns strong in, in, in this family's heart. So in Zombie Kids, uh, the, the zombie apocalypse has started. The kids are trying to uh, find shelter in their school and they need to lock the doors of the school. Both games are cooperative, so both games play with all players working together attempting to complete that objective. Zombie teens, uh, we're a little more angsty and proactive. This time our zombie teens, the survivors, are trying to, um, to, to move around components that will need to find the cure. In both cases, of course, you have situations where the zombies overrun certain areas of the board and that causes the players to, to lose. And of course, uh, on the other hand, you, if you can complete the objective of the of the of the scenario the objective of the game then you win the game cooperatively these are legacy games they come with envelopes i guess i can show you the and the sealed envelopes they come with envelopes so that uh, will contain components that you're instructed uh to reveal only as the game progresses only as you complete certain objectives there is a campaign system and you complete adventures you will add stickers there and that will also tell you when you reveal uh, a new envelope there are also as in many legacy games sort of rules that you uh st stickers representing new rules that you attach to the rule book uh, there are different missions. I really can't show you anything from here. Different missions. Maybe this way. No. Different special missions. You can uh, basically achievements. So inspired by video games. If you win a game uh, using specific rules, uh, using specific challenges, then you get extra stickers. Kids love to attach stickers. And I'll tell you, I like that too. So nothing wrong with that. So these stickers will regulate the unlocking of different abilities and different rewards. And as things happen, as things are revealed, more components become available, more rules become available, and more modes of play become available. Maybe the zombies do different things after a while. Maybe your characters learn to do different things. So they get extra powers, but at the cost of some extra penalties. I don't know. It's not like I play the game a lot. Um, so... The basic game is almost the same in both in both games, uh, which is a player will, throw, throw, will first roll a die, adding new zombies to the board, as simple as that, uh, and then you will have, and then the player will perform actions, and then the next player goes. So you have that that idea of connecting the agency of the enemies with the agency of the players, so that uh, regardless of number of players, so there will always, there's always a balance there between how often these zombies go and how often you go. And the actions, the basic actions will be to move and to remove zombies from the board. Usually it takes an action to move to an adjacent area, it takes an action to remove a zombie from the board. They're not that tough. And then you may have different actions that you can do, but it's just as simple as that. Roll a die to add zombies and then it's an action point. Uh, kind of game and again it may look like this at least you get a little bit of a sense but I really can't show you anything else because I'm too afraid of spoilers and really the joy of the legacy system you know it's it's there in the surprises so I want to make sure
And so we're moving our our fun uh, teenagers around doing different things. In this basic game here, you're collecting these crates and are going to tr and you're going to place them in the central area. It seems that simple. That's what you're trying to do to win the game. There may be scenarios in which you move them in some other ways, but the main idea remains very simple and very very good. Uh, you know, I play games with my kids, and I play cooperative games, and I always tell them, and you know, kids, you can just play them by themselves. I don't need to be around. But they don't actually do that all that often. What they do with this one? I do come back from, from wherever, errands or something, and I see that they my kids picked up the game, and they're playing together. And uh, they are not even arguing. That alone is magical to me, at uh, least in my family. Uh, it's such a simple game at the beginning. And then as you unlock more things, uh, you have so many more options. It becomes a legit, I want to say, heavier, lighter game. Uh, it doesn't get to the mid-core, maybe, but it's uh, it's a rich, light game. There, you start having so many options that it becomes a lot more engaging, even from the perspective of an adult gamer. And of course, your kids have been playing it all along. They, they the rules, so the options are added one at a time, so you get to the level of complexity in a completely natural, organic way. The game trains its own players, as it happens so often in modern games that have a legacy system, or a campaign, or a scenario system. And it's just so much fun to play the game and unlock more things as you go and see the game progress and change over time. So, uh, I love legacy games. We, we all do. They have been a smashing success in the last decade or so of gaming. They're just so incredibly appealing. But as you know, of course, there's an overhead there. Uh, they tend to be complex. They tend to require uh, a certain level of a degree of engagement. The idea that finally kids or exhausted adults that from time to time just want to play a quick, simple, uh, solo um, legacy game, the idea that we have the very light option open to young kids or exhausted adults, that's awesome, that's fantastic. We loved the zombie kids uh, when we played it uh, back in the day, and we are loving zombie teens. I decided to film this video before the end of the campaign so I don't forget this time. We just love it. I'm telling you, if it's the kind of game that you have that is just so compelling. The flow so fast. Roll a die, take uh, some actions, the next player goes. It flows so fast. It moves so fast. There's so much action, so much tension. Now, between the two at this point, I don't, it may be because I'm playing it now and so I'm excited about it. I think I prefer zombie teens. I think I like the flow of the game better. Uh, in order to move these goods, you really have to coordinate with people in interesting ways. You have to form chains as you transfer those crates. Um, the flow just seems to, to, to be more interesting here in terms of what the players can do, in terms of how the, how the zombies act. They become a little smarter. Now they, they take over a location, they place a trampoline in it, and that helps them jump to different areas of the board, so uh, they're kind of easy to t to keep under control, but when at the beginning, when, when they start placing those ridiculous trampolines, um, it, the game escalates faster, I would say that, which also to me makes uh, with a game with a lot more tension. Zombies and trampolines are like, oh, that doesn't make any sense zombies and teenagers and all this nothing of this makes any sense so it's humorous it's funny i love it so zombie teens evolution uh, is probably my favorite of the two but it may be because i am experiencing it right now i know that we loved every minute of zombie kids evolution also so either set or both sets they are a lot of fun for families especially uh if you're looking for a game, carpet game with a humorous topic uh, to play with your kids or for your kids to play by themselves. Look no further, Zombie Teens and Zombie Kids Evolution are great ways in which kids can be, um, uh, can be exposed to the magnificent legacy system. And, you know, you're training them for then the big legacy games, which is, you know, an added bonus. Have them play this now, they'll be able to play Frosthaven with you when they're teenagers, and that's not a small advantage, I believe. 